in preparing for this um, panel discussion, I was, I was doing my homework on the web, and I noticed a, a statistic that was jarring to me. I read that over 90% of the world's information was generated in the last two years. Now, this, I read this in Fortune, so I immediately thought it was an error. Uh, <laughs> but, but I checked with uh, Duke uh, Chang from Watson, and he confirmed that this is, in, in fact, the case. And so it made me think about how we're all tethered to our smartphones and our iPads and how we're being bombarded with information. So for the first question, I wanted to focus, drill down into the financial sector and focus on where, where the panel, panelists think banks are in tr on the continuum of using information in a productive, efficient way. Why don't we start with you, Boxley? Sure. Well, I, I actually talked to a bank uh, last week who described their data problem as they're in a room with an enormous amount of valuable stuff, the enterprise data. The problem is it's fairly dark in the room and they're having trouble finding all of it. Uh, and meanwhile, the, the stream data is flowing over the room and they can hear it outside. And meanwhile, the social data is knocking on the door. So lots of data, lots of value, lots of things going on around them. You know, the trick is to get to that value. JP, you cover banks, you, yep. what about you? Where do you, I mean, you, you're looking at small community banks and small banks all the time. Where are banks on that spectrum of? I mean, I'd add to exactly what, what Boxley just said. I mean, I think that uh, in the banks that we talk to uh, on a daily basis, they're still struggling with managing the data they have in-house. I mean, I think that uh, a lot of times you have this sort of confusing web within a bank where they have all, this, all these systems, all this data from these systems, but no way to properly integrate that data and to really understand who their customers are, who their profitable customers are, uh, and then therefore how to, how to continue to be profitable with those uh, customers. And then you add to that the vast amount of data that's outside them, and, it, and then you add to that the regulatory concerns, which they're primarily focused on right now. Uh, you have a, a, a vast opportunity for these banks um, to take advantage of this data, but right now, they're almost drowning in it. And a lot of them just don't have the resources and the capability to be able to handle it in an effective manner. So that's kind of where we, where we stand today. From is, my is there any low-hanging fruit or other, is there certain data or information that banks are collecting now uh, that they should be focusing on first? Certainly their, their own internal data, uh, from, from my perspective. I mean, particularly, uh, you know, the banks that we talk to, if you just look at what they collect in their cores, uh, and, and the data and how they can push that out to the, their front line uh, and what their, their officers are using and their branch managers are using on a daily basis to try to interact uh, with their customers, that information just doesn't even flow out there. Uh, and so I, I think with this perspective, our perspective is that there's not even a proper mechanism for a lot of these banks to get that uh, data out to them, uh, out to their front line and, and be able to use that and increase cross-sell ratios uh, and make their branches more effective Etc. Banks are doing a lot of great things with data. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, fraud is fraud detection is getting better. I went on a vacation and didn't have my card turned off, um, but I felt. <laughs> <laughs> but I also felt very well protected because I know it's getting harder and harder to protect me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've moved to an appreciation for what banks are doing on the on the fraud area. They're getting pushed very hard on regulatory data, and they're meeting and mm -hmm. exceeding those requirements in some places. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, there are a lot of uh, banks out there now starting to play with mobile and social data and moving along. So it's, it's not all a bad story. It's just a big, big room uh, and a lot of work to be done. Duke, you're um, a director at Watson, and we all saw how Watson kind of crushed the competition on Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> is, uh, is Watson, um, can you give us some examples or explain how Watson is being used to create smarter sure. uh, organizations? Sure, I can do that. So we, I mean, we talk about this problem. We talk to customers about the fact that they are, we say they're, they're dying of thirst in a notion of data. Um, there's so many questions that they want to ask about their customers, for example, about uh, things that are going on in the market, and they know the data exists, and a lot of the times the data exists inside their walls. It's being collected for different purposes, and so it's in a different spot that they can't access it easily. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we're doing, working with customers on, is how do I collect and organize all the information that's available? A lot of it is unstructured, so you talked about the 90% of the world's data being created in the last uh, two years. 80% of that data is unstructured data. 
right? It's text, it's videos, it's voice, it's pictures. Um, and so how do you take advantage of all that? How do you pull that all together? How do you understand the contextual conversation with a customer, for example, um, the dialogues that are going on between the bank and your customer, what their preferences are, what their pain points are, what are the opportunities to perhaps go sell them something else. Um, and so that's one big pattern that we're working on with Watson is improving the customer experience, understanding how the front office could potentially leverage better customer insight. Uh, another pattern that we're looking on is very much more on the market side, understanding all the market information that's available out there, doing better valuations of assets, right? Whether it's um, in foreign exchange, as Ivan and I were talking about earlier, or in the municipal, uh, in the municipal bond market potentially, that there's a lot of information out there, a lot of it unstructured that goes into um, the underlying value of a particular asset that can be analyzed. And so that's another pattern that we're working on with lots of.